Good morning and welcome back to Sunday Mass at All Saints Parish. It's been a difficult two months for all of us. How wonderful it is to be here again and worshiping the Lord in the midst of his chosen people. My name is Paul and uh, I'll be your lector for this Mass. Uh, today we celebrate the Solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity. Now there are a few uh, procedures that we have to follow as a result of the uh, pandemic. So uh, the bathrooms will be closed throughout the Mass. Uh, in the case of emergency, please speak with one of the welcome team at the back. And uh, only one person will be able to use the bathroom uh, uh, for each, uh, each bathroom. To ensure the proper social distancing through the distribution of communion, please wait until your group is invited to come forward. You will come up uh, one aisle and then go return to your seat by a different aisle. Uh, communion on the tongue is strongly discouraged, but those who wish to receive it on the tongue should wait till the rest of the congregation has received their communion and then come forward from one of the side aisles. There will be uh, no collection taken today. Uh, you can drop your envelope in the collection box either when your group enters the church or if you haven't done it already, uh, when you leave the church. The celebrant for this Mass will be Father Don, and the homilist will be Deacon Greg. So please stand uh, for the opening hymn. people so that we can have an encounter with him in the midst of this small little gathering. And we're just learning how to do it, mm -hmm. as you can see some of the things are still not quite worked out yet, but we're going to get there and we're going to have a great encounter with the living God. Well, most of the time Sunday liturgy we have to be with 300 people, 400 people. This is like a small group and so it provides an opportunity to do things that we can't normally do. So we're going to work on that. Um, we have some limitation in this liturgy because we're live streaming. Welcome to you who are live streaming us with us. So we won't be quite as flexible maybe as the other liturgies, but we'll do what we can to make sure that you guys are engaged. So that you know the Lord is here, the Lord is caring about you. So we got four groups, or two small groups and one big group with us today. So we got Jet Sarmiento, they got a 20 over there. And this group is Daphne's group, and that's Catherine's group. And you won't necessarily always be the same mix of groups, but you'll be with your own little group, and we'll have fun. Jesus is loving us. It's the Feast of the Holy Trinity. He has revealed to us his nature as a community of love. And it is the model, of course, for our Christian community. It is the model for human family. It's the model that we ourselves want to say that's what we desire for ourselves, to know the Lord in the midst of a community. 
So we prepare for Mass on this day, asking forgiveness for the times we have not loved those close to us. I confess, Almighty oh, God, God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, and all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, who pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, may you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification made known to the human race your wondrous mystery. Grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses rose early in the morning and went up on Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, and took in his hand the two tablets of stone. The Lord descended in a cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name, the Lord. The Lord passed before Moses and proclaimed, the Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. And Moses quickly bowed his head toward the earth and worshiped. He said, if now I have found favor in your sight, O Lord, I pray, let the Lord go with us. Although this is a stiff-necked people, pardon our iniquity and our sin and take us for your inheritance. The word of the Lord. The responsorial song, Glory and Praise Forever. Glory and Praise Forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of our fathers, and blessed is your glorious and holy name. Glory and Praise Forever. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy, holy glory, and to be extolled and highly glorified forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, to be extolled and highly exalted forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you who look into the depths from your throne on the cherubim. Glory and praise forever. And blessed are you in the firmament of heaven, to be sung and glorified forever. Glory and praise forever. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, 
Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to Nicodemus, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. The one who believes in Him is not condemned, but the one who does not believe is condemned already for not having believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Padedon, brothers and sisters in Christ, good morning. good morning. What a beautiful day and what a beautiful feast or solemnity we're celebrating. You know, the Gospel acclamation just said that, truly, glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, to God who is, who was, and who is to come. So it is... Today, the solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity, turn to your neighbor and say, Happy Feast Day! Happy Feast Day! Yes! Yesterday, I was pulled out, or the, on Friday, I was pulled out from the office by a parishioner who felt he just had to clear confusion in his head. He said, Deacon, De Deacon Greg, Deacon Greg, help me, he says. I don't understand. What does it mean, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Well, the, the Catechism of the Catholic Church tells us that it is the most fundamental and essential teaching in the hierarchy of truth. It's where everything that we believe in is founded on. Without that, everything collapses. And that's the beauty of it. And yet, it is seldom directly explained, especially with respect to how the Holy Trinity impacts our lives during challenging times as what we are experiencing now and the many consequences of the pandemic that is still on us. Why we wonder is, is it not being explained so much? Because it is such a big mystery. And there was a time that I wished there would be a book entitled The Holy Trinity for Dummies. <laughs> just, just so I can understand that. 
But over the years, over the years, I believe I've been given a chance to have a glimpse, just a hint, on this marvelous truth that today I invite you to join me in taking just a simple step towards deepening our relationship with the Holy Trinity. That is, knowing Him not just in the head, but in the heart as you would know an intimate friend so that we can grow more and more to be one in mode of existence with this triune God who was, is, and will be. You may not be aware of it, but as practicing Catholics, we bring up the mystery of the Holy Trinity every day and to some more than just a number of times a day. Do you know how? Yes, what is the common, most common prayer we pray? In fact, we start every prayer with it. We start the Mass with it, and that is the sign of the cross. Isn't it? And we call in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, the word Trinity is not found in the Bible at all. You'll not see it there. But the same scriptures, in the same scriptures, we will understand that God reveals himself as a relational, loving, and compassionate God from where our understanding about Him came. So that is the first important message today. We need to relate with God as a loving, compassionate trinity of persons, not as an unconcerned God up there trying to manipulate everything and doing things so that we will all suffer. This truth is eloquently proclaimed by God Himself in the first reading today from the book of Exodus. He revealed himself to his people through his servant Moses, proclaiming his name and his essential qualities. He says, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. So, second important message for today, we have a God whose love is steadfast and is ever faithful. And Jesus speaks about the same merciful and gracious God in today's gospel. He says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. So here is the mystery. The God who sent his son is the one whom Jesus refers to as the father. The one whom the Father sent, his only Son, is Jesus, who reveals that he is also God. Both the Father and the Son sent the Holy Spirit, who is also God. Each of the three is God, but there is only one God. Three in one, triune God, the Holy Trinity, the mystery of God himself, captured in a way that reveals both himself who is eternal, no beginning and end, and transcends and comes all the way to our limited existence as human beings with our very limited mind. That's the span of the mystery of the Holy Trinity. He reveals who he is in the words that we could understand in order that we might reciprocate with our own desire to relate with him. Why does he want us to relate with him? so we can have a share in his divine life. That is the whole point. Terms dividing his person into three are immaterial as far as his nature is concerned. He is. As he said, I am. There's no division. He's just there. But it is a mystery which we will need, we will need to still understand even if we may not fully understand. Because at the same time that it is a mystery that is so profound, it is also a tenet which is foundational, and therefore we cannot be without, meaning we need to somehow have some ways to relate with. Furthermore, the relationship he calls us to is intimately personal. He relates with me, he relates with each one of you. Not exclusive but particular and something we need to enter into individually. And just like any relationship, 
it will not be intimate nor personal unless we regularly communicate with each other. Unless we regularly communicate with this triune God. But how does one communicate with the three different persons of the Holy Trinity? Of course, the default is, again, the sign of the cross. But that might not be enough, as you would easily notice, since it simply recognizes the three persons in one God, but does not distinguish one from the other. For example, how is the Father different from the Son? And how is the Son different from the Holy Spirit? And how is the Holy Spirit different from the Father? But why call on them separately? So today, I want you to leave this Mass appreciating the three persons of the same one God, which should help you deepen your loving relationship to Him. Here it is. Three things to remember about the Holy Trinity. God, who is love, created us. And being the loving source of our life and everything that sustains it, we refer to Him as Father, the loving Father. His invitation is for us to freely love Him back. But on account of our tainted nature and weakness, we often fail and turn away from Him instead. Thus, He enters into our broken humanity in Jesus to show us the way back to the Father and save us, offering Himself as an eternal sacrifice for all the wrongdoings that we, we commit and we refer to Him as the Son, sent by the Father to save us. And after Jesus revealed everything to us about the Father, He ascended to heaven and sent us the Holy Spirit to live within us so we can become one with Him now and for all eternity. Father, without beginning and without end, loving us and sending us His Son so that He can become one of us in order for us to be able to restore our relationship with the Father and living at the Spirit inside us so that we will always be connected with Him. Now, how does that apply to whatever difficulties we might be experiencing right now? Well, the Father's love is our insurance. No matter what's happening in your life, no matter what's happening in society, we are covered and all will be well because we have a loving Father. And then Jesus, in a special way, invites us to unite our suffering at the moment to His eternal sacrifice. There is no suffering, there is no pain that Jesus doesn't understand. And therefore, we can unite everything that we are experiencing with His own sacrifice. And then, the Holy Spirit pours His gifts upon us, the gift we need to be able to endure anything and everything, including difficulties, discomfort, COVID-19, even death. With the Holy Spirit, we can look at death eye to eye and say, Yes, of course, because I am one with God. The Catechism of the Catholic Church spells the whole creed which starts with the Holy Trinity in great detail. While I hope you would plunge into studying it more later, what I would like to suggest today is something more practical. That is, given those descriptions and how the Holy Spirit might move you, can you compose a simple personal prayer phrase to the Holy Trinity. And that's our memory aid for today. PPP, personal prayer phrase, which you can subsequently recite daily as your own way of communicating with God. Let me give you an example. It can be as simple as, Father, thank you for loving me. And then, yes, Jesus, my Savior, here I am, I will follow you. And then, come Holy Spirit, continue to renew me. Then, don't let a day pass without praying it. First hour in the morning, 
last hour in the evening, and as many times as you need to, need to during the day. And as you grow and show your God your personal response to Him through your prayer phrase, you would be moved to compose your own devotional prayer to the Holy Trinity. St. Paul, in fact, made this personal prayer phrase to the Trinity as a blessing. Did you hear that in the second reading today? Beautifully placed. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So, here is your takeaway today. And parents, please make sure that your children do it. And children, make sure your parents do it. So everybody, I invite you all to allow this Mass today to inspire you with your personal prayer phrase to the Holy Trinity. And then right after Mass, no sooner than you think of your next activity, write it down. Memorize it. And once you've memorized it, post it in our All Saints community page in Padlet.com. To access it, on your way out, you'll get your card. There is a QR code. There is the URL address. Just get into that and then post your personal prayer phrase. And we will see it's others' personal prayer phrase. If you don't get your card, there is the poster there. Take a picture of it and then bring it home and you'll be able to do it. In closing, pray with me. My own personal Holy Trinity devotion prayer, which I pray every day as early as I wake up in the morning. All together, please. O loving and merciful God, Father Almighty, source of all life and all goodness, I come before you sinful, broken, and repentant, redeemed and made worthy only by the self-emptying sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ, on the cross, totally surrendered to your divine providence in the Holy Spirit, do unto me according to your will. I offer you the little that I am, and I have, for your greater honor, praise and service, longing to be with you and all your children in your eternal kingdom through the intercession of our Blessed Mother Mary and all your saints. Amen. sent his Son to be one with us. The Father has sent his Son, Jesus. He has made his Son, Jesus, our source of life. Let us raise our petitions to the triune God as we pray. Response, God of love, hear our prayer. 
God of love, love hear our prayer. Send your spirit to the church that he may help us in our weakness and bestow the gifts that will connect us with you, we pray. God of love, hear our prayer. Let your spirit touch the minds and hearts of religious and political leaders that they may be filled with the necessary strength and wisdom to serve your people well, we pray. God of love, hear our prayer. Lord, send help to the lost, the sick, the lonely, and those who suffer in any way, we pray. God of love, hear our prayer. Divine Spirit, bind the members of All Saints Parish community together in friendship and unity, that the thanksgiving offering of the Eucharist may be reflected in our daily lives, we pray. God of love, hear our prayer. God of all the living, bring the dead to share in your glory, the glory too of your Son and the Holy Spirit, we pray. God of love, hear our prayer. Father, you sent your word to bring us truth and your spirit to make us holy. Help us worship you, one God in three persons, by personally and intimately responding to your call. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be, <coughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and blessed. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, 
and with one voice they acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, and the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we provide for unfading health. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop, 
the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and ever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal, eternal Holy Trinity and undivided unity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. See you in a moment. <coughs> So we're going to keep working at how we celebrate with 40 people. I think one of the good things to remember is we people need to be here 10 minutes early because, of course, we've got our group coming in, we've got people going to the hall, and we need to make sure you get in the right place, that you get checked in properly and disinfected properly. So please remember to come on time. So opening public masses has been a tricky business. The bishop has issued countless directives around it. Here's some of the things that, that we have to do here in the parish. So first of all, the, the, the parish must maintain a contact list of every single person who attends a particular mass. Uh, this is to aid with contact tracing should one of us ever, uh, the, should, you know, should it ever become necessary. So that's why we're organizing groups, that's why we can't actually substitute people, that's why we can't uh, decide you're going to a different mass this week, because we need to have in the computer an accurate list of who is expected to be at a liturgy. We have to kind of arrange this in advance. The schedule is done for a month, because booking scheduling for a single day would uh, drive us crazy. So it's a lot of work trying to sort out. So we have 500 people uh, signed up for Sunday liturgies, and there's a lot of people to sort out. So we get uh, a maximum of 40 parishioners, plus workers at each of the liturgies. So the Sundays are organized then in groups of 10, or in this case, a group of 20 and two tens. Only a registered member of one of these groups will be admitted to Sunday Mass. Only a group coordinator can approve a person's entry into the church. Um, we'll probably, so the church groups will probably be try to rendezvous outside before the liturgy as we did today. If the weather's bad, I don't know, I'm in here. <laughs> don't come too early. No, we'll probably go under the aisle and find somewhere to hide you. Uh, if you're not able to attend a scheduled Mass, please notify your group leader so they don't have to hang around after waiting for you to turn up. And don't call the parish office, there's nothing we can do about it. So call your group leader if you know you're going to be missing, just so they don't have to keep looking for you. Individuals are not able to transfer from one group to another, neither can groups move from one scheduled time to another. That is, within the format, within the, the June, uh, as set up. Comes to July, then there might be some movement within groups at that point. But for the present, for the June schedule, no changing. Uh, masses were oh, welcome, live stream people. So we get a live stream still at the 11 a.m. on Sunday. A week tomorrow, we are going to open up the weekday masses. 
to the public. We'll follow somewhat the same approach. We can have 40 people also at a weekday mass. Weekday masses though will not be organized in groups, they will organize by individuals. So you are to if you want to come to a weekday mass, we need a we can afford to have another 40 parishioners or so, about half full at present. Um, so you can go on the website and register there. You have to choose your first choice, your second choice, and any other masses you might wish to, to uh, attend. You could also sign up on the sheet from the foyer. So we're booking, once again, for four weeks. That is from June 15th to July 11th is the first weekday um, mass schedule. Uh, the registrations need to be in by Wednesday because the schedule goes out on Friday next, uh, this coming. Um, the, every group needs to appoint someone to help with disinfecting the pews after every liturgy. We need to do this. So Ivy is your coordinator. She'll, uh, if, you, if the workers kind of hang around after the rest of them have left, Ivy will let you know, give you the supplies, show you what to do. Those who attend Mass in the church, we will always exit through the side door so we don't run into the uh, people from the hall. And we'll go group by group, beginning with the group closest to the, to the door. Any further questions, you can speak to somebody else. <laughs> Please stand. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Mighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.